Hi there, I'm Greg with Sonix, and today we're going to be digging into our Turbo 400 SmartTech drum module and giving you more information on what it takes to assemble and install this, this kit. Now remember, this replaces both the forward and the direct drums, but assembly is very straightforward and easy. The first time it might be a little bit different, but anybody that's built a Turbo 400 before will have no problem mastering this new kit. Um, use your same basic tools, a spring compressor that you might use for any other build. And then what you get is nice because it includes everything to replace both the forward and the direct drums all in one kit. All your, your drums, pistons, hubs, uh, bearings, friction steels, everything you need other than the input shaft in one convenient box that makes it a great value. Now as we go through this today, there's going to be five basic areas. Feel free to skip ahead if you want, but we're going to have our, our forward piston area, our direct piston area, or what we call our sprag shaft with the uh, sprag. Uh, we'll put the drum together, and once we have those four sub-assemblies done, then we're going to do the final assembly. And, you know, a lot of this is going to be very familiar to anybody that's built a 400 or built transmissions. There'll be a few things that are uh, unique to this, and we'll point that out as we go along. But uh, let's dig right into it. Okay, we're going to start with the forward piston housing. And the first part of that is to install the input shaft. And we have a few different input shafts available, but they all have a 28 spline where it presses into the housing. And then this uh, 28 spline is also compatible with other aftermarket shafts that have that same 28 spline. So the first thing we want to do is start the shaft in there and get it in just a little bit of ways and then check to make sure that it's running true before we press it the rest of the way in. Uh, so we're going to do that now and take it over to the arbor press. Okay, and with the Sonic shafts you can just basically press them all the way down to they're seated. Uh, with other aftermarket shafts, you do want to check to make sure that it didn't come through too far here where it could uh, contact the main shaft. So there's a little measurement we can do there. But uh, other than that, we're just going to move forward now. And we have an O-ring seal that goes here. And then a conventional lip seal that goes on the forward piston. And the forward piston does have a small very tiny cup plug with a bleed hole in it and that's just basically to get the air out on apply. And we're going to put a little assembly lube around here and then this will just kind of go right on with a seal installer. Tuck in the lip seal until it drops down just a little bit. Okay. And then I'm just going to Push that down, and now we are ready for the springs. And then spring retainer, and then snap ring. We'll go over to the press. Just use a little bearing race to, to get an even press on this. Okay, that's it for the forward piston housing. Okay, moving on next is the direct housing. And with this, we do have our high RPM check ball capsule in here, but there is a bleed hole, a small bleed hole that we have in here, but you would wanna open that up with whatever uh, recommendation your valve body or trans brake supplier has. So, uh, moving on, we have the seals, and on this one we do have an O-ring on the inner diameter, and again, conventional lip seal on the outer diameter. A little bit of trans gel, or assembly lube. And just start that down over lip seal. And then you just want to tuck in the lip seal. And 
And you just want to make sure that the anti-rotation tab right here on the piston is lined up and centered over one of the, uh, the drum tabs. That's good enough right there. And then the springs. These are uh, stout direct piston springs that will give you a, a quick release of the trans brake. There's a lot of them. Okay. And we have our spring retainer and our snap ring. We'll go over to the press. All right, that's it for the direct housing. Okay, next up is the Sprague shaft. And this is kind of a unique part. Uh, we call it the Sprague shaft because it has an integral Sprague race and it's a, a shaft portion that transfers some torque through it even though it's a bit stubby. And to put this together, we're just gonna lay down the direct clutch hub, lock this into it. And then we have a front Sprague retainer, and this has uh, some notches on it that have to engage with these notches on the Sprague shaft. So that'll go down and just lock right in like that. And then we have our 36 element Pro Mod uh, 4080 Sprague. We're going to take one of the end caps and drop that on. And then the uh, Sprague element has, has a lip right here. Uh, on one side, and that's going to go towards the rear. And then the Sprag race has a step that also will go towards the rear. And then we just want to insert the Sprag element into the race and have it stick out just a little bit, about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more right there. And then hold in the hub, we can come down with this and hopefully it'll just drop right on. Then the second sprag end cap should just sit right down in there. And at this point, we wanna bring in a little Loctite and I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit each one and then we have our rear sprag retainer it's going to lay right down there and then we have these four little screws and these are a t15 torx we're just going to run these guys right in and torque those to 17 inch pounds and then those tight and torqued and loctited we want to do a final check. We have a arrow right here. That's the direction the Sprague race should rotate. And then we can also just check that it should just have a tiny little bit of end play in the Sprague race, just to make sure nothing's bound up. All right, now onto the seals. So these are the uh, solid anti-rotation seal rings, which is the added set of seal rings to get the direct oil up to the piston area. And these have rubber quad rings that uh, fit underneath the seal rings to expand them out. And it's very important that these quad rings do not get twisted. So we're going to carefully put these into the groove. And then the other one. And then at this point, you want to get some good light and some good glasses if you're old like me. And you want to look right down on this, rotate it around, and just verify there's no twist in that quad ring. All right, everything looks good. Now we're going to put these seals on, and these go in the uh, locking or anti rotation tabs. Um, and we have one end gap here, so we want the other end gap to be 180 degrees over. Okay. Now that we have this Sprague assembly assembled, 
the next step is to uh, put it into the direct housing because we want the seals and the quad rings to kind of take a set so it all goes together a little bit better. So we're going to take our direct housing, put that in there, and see how that just dropped right in. Sometimes you might have to work the seal a little bit to get it to go in the first time. But then once it sits like this for a while, it should go together um, every time without a problem. So we're just going to let that sit, and that's it for the direct housing. Okay, next we have the drum assembly. And to start with, I'd just like to give you a little tour around the drum. So to start with, we have this center rib, and you'll notice that it's a lesser distance to the front for the forward clutches, and a greater distance to the rear for the direct clutches. And for the front, we've even marked on here with a little F. And then we have these, what we call tick marks that are located and around the perimeter of the drum. So there's four of these tick marks that correspond with where the uh, rubber clutch separators go if you choose to install them. And this just, you know, with all the lugs in the drum, this just helps you keep oriented so the rubber clutch separators stay stacked right on top of each other for or a consistent force. And then we have an additional tick mark at the top or the 12 o'clock position, and that just helps keep it oriented. So, you know, rather than turning the drum this way, we can turn it over this way and have everything in exactly the same spot. And to me, it just helps uh, keep things oriented when we go together. So, uh, to start with, we're going to put one of the snap rings in, and we're gonna start from the direct side. And now these snap rings, uh, they will work in a regular 400 drum, uh, but these are uh, unique parts we made for this kit. And because there's four of them, we wanted to minimize the end gap to keep the balance as neutral as possible. And to assist with that, when I put the two snap rings in for the backing plate, I'm gonna stagger the gaps. So the first one I'll put in at the six o'clock position. Okay, and now I'm gonna turn the drum over. And here we have the backing plate. And this is the front of the drum marked with an F. And then the backing plate has a little identification groove that also has to go towards the front. So we're gonna drop that in. And then this snap ring will go at the 12 o'clock position, at least 12 o'clock for me. And all right, and that's it. The drum assembly is ready to go. And now we can move on to the final assembly of the module. Okay, now we're gonna bring all these parts together and assemble the module. So we'll start with the drum. We have the F side up, a uh, little 12 o'clock notch at the top. And we have our forward clutch pack. Now that's six frictions. And we have 77,000 steels in the core of the pack, and then we have 60,000 steels at either end of the pack against the piston and the backing plate. And we're going to start with the notch up. And you know, many Turbo 400 steels have missing splines or partially missing splines. And these have a full complement of lugs all the way around, and that makes it easier to use the clutch separators. And now these are optional, but it's a thing that people have been doing for years. It uh, reduces the open clutch drag and helps with clutch uh, release, but they are a bit tedious. Uh, and to that end, that's what these little tick marks are for, to help you orientate where they go. So what we're going to do is we're going to build up the forward clutch pack. We're not going to put the uh, clutch separators in the forward pack, but then when we get to the directs, we will. So we'll get to those in just a minute. So now we're going to build up the rest of the forward pack. So we have our first 60,000 steel, friction, steel all the way on up and of course you know best practice is to pre-lube your frictions then we have our last 60,000 steel that goes on top of the clutch pack that'll go against the piston and we have our assembled forward piston housing drops right in and then this Snap ring I'm going to install at the 6 o'clock position. Okay, that's our forward clutch pack. Now we can check clutch clearance by going in through here. And you can 
actually measure your clearance through there and get an idea of what you have. And then with that, we will now move over to here. Again, we will have our 12 o'clock tick mark at the top and we'll start with the forward clutch hub. So <clears throat> with the bearings, they have a radius side and then a sharper side. And we always want the radius side to go over the, the shaft portion like that. And then with this one, again, the radius side will go like that. So that's the way the bearing goes. We're gonna put the bearing right down inside there. And then the clutch hub. And if, if we would have put the clutch separators in, this all goes together a bit easier. Okay, so we want to make sure that the clutch hub is down all the way against the bearing and not sitting up on a clutch. So we're just going to pick that clutch hub up a little bit. Listen for that solid clunk of it hitting the bearing. Uh, if it's sitting on a clutch plate, it'll, it'll sound a little different and it'll have a little springiness to it. So we want that nice solid clunk and then the bearing down. And now we're ready for the direct clutch pack. Now this has one additional friction and steel plate. Um, again, we have the 77,000 steels in the core, the frictions, and then we have the 60,000 steels at either end. Now for this pack, we are gonna use the rubber clutch separators. <clears throat> so to set up for that, I just have a little piece of paper I bent up here and we have seven frictions. So I'm going to do seven sets of four. And this is just, you know, I'm not saying you have to do this. This is just my way of, of keeping track because the rubber clutch separators, um, you know, if you miss just one, it can really throw things off. And we do give you extras. Okay, so that is seven sets of four bumpers. Now, before uh, going together with the clutches and the clutch separator. In this area with the tick mark, this, this groove right here, it's helpful to just put a little bit of uh, assembly lube right in there and that helps just keep those uh, clutch separators, gives them something to stick to um, without getting you know, the grease all over your fingers, which then makes handling them that much more difficult. So we're gonna start off with four. Again, we have a tick mark. That's where our separator goes. And over here, we can use just a pick to get them into their home. And then we have <clears throat> a friction plate, steel plate with the notch up. And we do four more separators, same locations. And like we said, this is, you know, a, a trick that people have been doing for years, cutting up O-rings and making clutch separators. What we've tried to do here is make it all a lot easier. Um, and it does help with, uh, you know, open clutch drag and clutch release. While not necessary in every application, we do believe it's a detail worth considering when you're building these. Okay, then we have the last friction plate and the last steel plate. <clears throat> now at this point, again, you wanna see an even uh, tension or spring on the clutch pack from the rubber separators. And then you can go in and you wanna make sure that each friction is completely free. And that again verifies that you have an even amount of clutch separators all the way around and that you're good to go. Okay, with that, we can now take our direct clutch hub. These are lube slots right here. Uh, there's none on this side. And we want those lube so slots to be facing up. And you know, again, with the separators in there, the clutch hubs go in much easier. Um, okay, and again, you wanna be able to pick this up Get that nice clunk of it sitting on the bearing. And with that, we now have our direct clutch housing with the sprag assembly in there. And the reason these two were together was to help size that seal down. So we're just gonna take that apart. We're gonna take our direct clutch hub and we're just going to install it 
right here. <clears throat> and then the first or the forward snap ring we put in was at the six o'clock position. So this one will go in at the 12 o'clock position. So it's going to go in play like that. And now we have our built up module. We can also check the direct clutch clearance right through here. And when you have the, um, uh, the rubber separators in there, you will get some tension, um, but you can see your clutch clearance right there. And um, it's nice being able to see right through the side what kind, of, what kind of clearance you have. Now again, we want to put the spray shaft assembly in here and we have one final check we want to do. <clears throat> and that's right between this surface and this surface. We just want to check for clearance. And there is no adjustment for this, um, but it's an indication, you know, that everything is together correctly. So you know, I have about a 50 thousandths, I think, you know, in the instructions we say 50 to 60 thousandths. And we're just going to put this down in there and just make sure it fits. And like I said, it's, it's not a, an adjustable clearance or anything like that. It's just an indicator that everything is together correctly. Okay. So we have that. Now we're ready to install this in the transmission. Um, you know, until you're ready for that point, it's best to leave this in there. Um, again, we're trying to help that uh, seal size, but when we do the assembly, this will go in first and then this. And it's also important that when you have it assembled like this, if you have it sitting on the bench, you know, don't make the mistake of picking it up. You know, here it brought the sprag shaft up with it, but after it's been run and everything sized a little bit more, you know, that could fall right out. You know, it could drop on your toe, but you know, it could break the parts too. So just keep that in mind. So we're going to get ready to put this in the transmission and show you the final in installation. Okay, now we're at the stage where we're going to be putting the module into the transmission. We have this cutaway transmission here to give you a better idea what's going on. And, the, you know, this isn't step-by-step -step rebuild procedures. This is just to give you an idea of how this is similar and different from, you know, a conventional two-drum system. So again, when we go to load it in, we want to take the sprag shaft out, load that down into the transmission. And these are OE um, size intermediate clutches. Again, we're going to drop that, look for that thunk. And then once that's in there, this will go down right on top of it. And that's it. It's installed. And from here, you'd want to check and set your end play with your selective washers or bearing or whatever you want to do up there and install your pump. And bolt that in and you would check your end play. Now there is one final check on this module and that's because we did bring the drum a little bit further forward. So we want to check the clearance right here between the uh, casting and the drum assembly. And we have to check that with the drum out here, out of the unit. So after you've set your end play, you're gonna put the drum back in there and you're just gonna check that clearance right there. And the reason for that is, um, you know, some of these castings, most of them I would say are machined right here for clearance. Uh, some of them are as cast, but depending on, you know, how the pump's been machined or what, what selective washer or combination you have there, you just want to make sure you have some clearance there. It should be a minimum of about 40 thousandths of an inch. And once you have that check done, then you can do your final, final assembly. And this will drop right back in there. Put your pump in with gasket, no ring and all that good stuff. And that's it. One module to replace both drums increases the efficiency, gets more wheel horsepower out through the transmission into the driveline, makes the cars run faster and more consistent. It's really a great, great deal. As you can see from this uh, assembly video, there's nothing overly complex about it. It goes together in a very straightforward manner. And once you've done it once or twice, it's going to be very routine for, for most any builder. So if after watching this video, you still have any questions, feel free to reach out to our product support team. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and have fun putting these things in the transmissions.